All right, so we're down here in Savannah, Georgia right now. I got a whole crew of badass motherfuckers that are gonna teach me how to drag race. We had a boost bike, like 25 pounds of boost. Bent a rod, lifted a head. Who treated me unfair? And I awoke to the sunrise. Remembered an awful dream. Was right in front of me. And in someone's dream. Trouble finds you in worry. It sticks around to your day. <laughs> That's a good race. <laughs> All right, we've got just a couple of days to take this Hilux and turn it into like a legit drag car. We've got a big event coming up down in South Carolina that I can't really talk about, but we'll be able to disclose after it's published publicly. Um, but we're gonna yank the bed off. We're gonna put ladder bars on this. We got a built six liter from Calculated Chaos getting put together. Um, and we've got a monster transmission Thor converter going in it. <clears throat> it's started. Found these ladder bar brackets sitting in the scrap pile. They just happen to have a Toyota Hilux body mount hole right in the top. We'll glue them on. So I didn't know exactly what springs I was gonna to need to turn this Toyota Hilux into a drag race truck. So I bought 200 pound springs and I made an adjustable coil over mount that has three different settings on it. What this does is it, it gives a motion ratio to the actual coil over shock itself and makes the coil less effective. So this is mounted at a 10 degree angle at the very top, which makes the shock 95% effective. The next hole makes it 85% effective. And this bottom hole, 55% effective. So it essentially turns this 200 pound spring into a 190 pound spring, 170 pound spring, and 130 pound spring. And all I have to do is reach down here and adjust the, the clicker on the bottom of the shot to change the dampening ratio, or to change the dampening curve. So it gives us lots of room for adjustability and tunability on this pickup truck. So we're probably gonna end up on one of these back holes here for drag racing, put it on a front hole when we wanna turn it into a pickup or go drift. Thank <laughs> you. 
This thing's scary. So what we've got here is a custom built uh, truck bed toolbox with a built-in air to water intercooler reservoir tank. Special thing about this tank is we have two chambers. The water is pumped up into the first chamber and passes through a air conditioning evaporator core out of a 99 Silverado into the second chamber, making it sub-freezing temperatures, then pumped back up to the engine and run through our Tick Performance air to water intercooler in our Holly High Ram intake. This is Monster Transmission's 4L80E SSX2. The X stands for extreme. This has got a uh, billet drive drum, straight cut planetary gears, basically the best of the best. Anything that you can do to this transmission has been done for this transmission and for this build. Monster has their own proprietary transmission fluid called Burning Rubber Synthetic Cider. We got a couple of cases of that. We got a big heavy duty transmission cooler to keep the transmission cold. It seems that most of the transmission failures that I've experienced or my friends have experienced have been due to overheating and improper cooling. So we've got a massive trans cooler to try to, try to avoid that problem this time around. To complement this monster SSX2 4L80E build, we've got a pro billet torque converter from Thor Converters. Uh, we set the stall at about 3,400 RPM, and this about a thousand horse, a little more than a thousand horse, so it should flash around 4,000, but it's still got lock up. It's gonna make this thing drivable because in the end of the day, this is not a race car. This is a cross country road trip machine. Thank you, Alex. just shows up. <laughs> You're all in there. Ready? Jeez. Everybody do the funny. Oh, okay. I don't know what So while we're trying to turn this Hilux into a drag race truck, we got to be real with what it actually is. And it's a road trip vehicle that we drive across the country. So we ended up going with a 3,400 RPM stall converter from Thor Converters. It's a billet converter. And we chose it not because it's gold and gold's my favorite color, but because this converter is built to handle any horsepower limit. And anytime you're installing a new converter, you always want to put in some Burning Rubber Brewing Company's synthetic cider automatic transmission fluid. You're going to want to put one quart inside of this before you install it into the transmission. Always want to make sure you lube up the O-ring on the input shaft. And when the converter goes in, be very careful to put it on nice and square as not to damage the O-ring. You're going to want to spin it to get three clicks out of it. One, two, sometimes a third one can be a real bear. If you don't get three clicks, you risk damaging the pump and permanent damage to the transmission and converter. We're gonna have to edit that. It, make it five minutes long. Let them know what it's like in real life. <laughs> oh, hey, there we go, right? Three clicks. And there's no spaghetti. There's not really spaghetti. <laughs> there's spaghetti. That one's got threads on it. And. We've got a straddle of jack stands. Oh, I feel like I'm having a child. <laughs> You'll be fine. I just fall to the ground. Catch me. Oh, I got the baby. I got the baby. <laughs> Being a pickup truck, we've got essentially no weight in the back of it. So I thought uh, I could double down and get a 22 gallon fuel cell, which will give me double the travel time between fuel stops on our cross country trips. And 
add a whole bunch of weight behind the rear axle. So I ordered this cell from RJS. And we've got about a day and a half to get this truck race ready. And uh, it turned out that it's a half an inch wider than advertised, which is about 16th of an inch too wide to fit between the frame rails. So I got a boatload of work to do now instead of just dropping it in and hooking up the fuel lines. <laughs> oh yeah, 60 pounds. I'm better eat, boys. And that sounds better. That sounds fine. Yeah, that sounds fine. Good. So it's, so it's just a kink fuel line. Yep. What if it had a kink? It was kinked up. Well, it wasn't the wire guy's fault that time. We don't know that now. It wasn't well, that well, time. I said that time. Right now, yeah. That was good. I'm excited about that. Started. Yeah. That oh, was... did you shut it right off? Yeah. Oh, yeah. good. So that wasn't my fault. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. You want to hear it start again? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't shut that off. Try it again. Do it again. Oh, well, this is not a stock 4.8 liter anymore. Okay. So that's it's yeah. probably just not gonna. Yeah. a dodge to tow this thing down to North Carolina and our steering pump just took a crap which means we have no brakes and we have no steering so swapping out stealing Eric half ton truck three quarter ton <laughs> three quarter ton if this truck takes a crap I'm unloading the Hilux and I'm driving it I don't care if the production company says that I'm not allowed to drive the truck to the show or not but I gotta get there more than I gotta tow it this is a racing show not a towing show Another two inches. Okay.
off. Just a little up, leave and take performance right now. It's been like nine days of essentially no sleep. Uh, we had a boost spike, like 25 pounds of boost. Bent a rod, lifted a head. <clears throat> I've got to start filming in the morning. We got a race in two days. So I got to drive you know, a couple hundred miles to another shop. We got some Gen 4 rods. We're gonna tear this thing right down to a short block. Rebuild it overnight. So hashtag team no, the team no sleep. Always have fun with this stuff, so good, yeah. <laughs> like this happens everywhere I go. Mountain, follow the bird up there. Cause I found me a woman who treated me unfair. And I heard her survive. Remember an awful dream of lightning and thunder. And even someone scream Trouble finds you and worry It sticks around to your day Once you found a little darling And she takes all your head Hold on, wood table <laughs> with a four hundred dollar twister compressor. Man, I drop a festiva. Yeah, then I drop my truck the next day and they're like, "Sure, just do it." New motor takes seven, starts the first time every time.
that, that's getting blown off the ceiling. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the, we just pulled the valve cover off, and yeah. we found that the push rod wasn't seated in the rocker arm, and yep. maybe it was done during assembly, or maybe <laughs> it fell out. And we're going to try to fire it up, and it's going to start the first time, every time. comes up and oils your rocker arms comes from inside the engine up through the lifter and there's a cup in the lifter with a hole in the center of it and if you look down in there you can see the cup in there and it looks wet and the yeah, pressurized oil hole. comes out hole. here <coughs> goes into your cup inside the rocker arm this comes Spills out the out. little hole in the top and it'll lube down the whole rock arm and it'll lube this union upgrade that he has and it lubes the tip right here. It comes through that hole mm -hmm. and it'll lube it all. And that keeps this metal from metal right here from wearing out. It puts a film Which one? over it. Yep. Just like your cylinder walls. Your mm -hmm. cylinder walls get a film in there to keep your rings from wearing. And that's Tyler's tech tip for the day. <laughs> <laughs> that was the Certified. Yeah. <laughs> Certified tech tip. <laughs> so the push rods just weren't seated in so the like, in the lifters. In the lifter, yep. But how did they the not? Yeah, how did they, 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 they all drop to we'll the see. same height That's, but not be they, seated? Right? Who knows? They we're gonna try it. The, they <laughs> weren't at the same. They were at the same height. It bothers but they me because it's my side. <laughs> my <laughs> bad. <laughs> I don't know what I did wrong. <laughs> Much. There it goes. All right, now that one's pumped up. You see how that one just shot it out right yep. there? Sometimes, like, you know how Chevrolet's famous for dropping lifters? Yeah. Sometimes when you take the engine apart, the lifter's not Is collapsed. It? It's up. I'm because when you shut the engine off for whatever reason, the check valve in the pump, it'll allow keep it to pressure. keep pressure, and it'll pump the lifter back up when you turn it off because it's not rotating. So that's why you think we had that problem with them it, not seating right? It could be. But see, this one right here, that one didn't have <laughs> any oil coming out of it. He's going to wish he had driven a crappy truck now. <laughs> This is what we live for. If you don't 
okay? All right, so we're down here in Savannah, Georgia right now. I got a whole crew of badass motherfuckers that are gonna teach me how to drag race. I tried to hook up with, uh, with Dean and Lyle in Mooresville, North Carolina. We got started and then we got rained out. So it's two weeks later. Um, I was doing a flyby with a camera car with a Netflix show we were filming and I lost control, smashed right into the camera car. We ended up in the median camera car went away on a wrecker and this thing's all effed up but can't quit you know we put all this effort in to try to turn this thing into like a drag truck and teach me how to drag race now we're here we're gonna finish the episode we're gonna make a couple of test passes just exactly the way it is these guys are gonna see how it launches and we're gonna see what we can come up with for for ways to make this thing a little bit faster and more consistent on the track all right so you guys have all had a chance to take a look at this thing you have a general idea of what it is I don't think you quite understand how dangerous it is. So in the meantime, we're gonna enjoy what it looks like. Uh, but what do you think can be done to improve this? Just from looking at it, we haven't even taken a pass yet. What do you what do you see the weaknesses and, and pros of this thing? Uh, I mean, cause y'all got fast cars. You, of course, it, of course it needs a trans brake. I mean, for it to be like consistent and fast, it needs a trans brake. I mean, as far as the motor, I think that can make plenty of power. Um, Suspension is going to be the biggest key. Yeah, suspension, suspension, yeah. But it's hard to say what that's going to do until we see it in action, you know what I mean? Yep. Of course, double adjustable rear shocks to help you out a good bit. And I don't know yep. what you got on the front. Maybe something that, that can move a little in the front. But. Nope. Front's pretty tight. The rear, I have single adjustable QA ones. Yeah. That, we'll see what it does on that. And that's all you can do. <laughs> you can just adjust that. With a double adjustable, you have a little more play. But until we see which way the direction of it takes off when you leave, we won't know. Uh, it may do halfway decent. Uh, so what's the plan? We're going to make one pass? Make a pass, we'll video it, see what it looks like. And see and if we've we got, what's that there. thing called? Can you tell me Dragon. about that? I've seen a lot of people running it like on YouTube and stuff, and they're within a couple hundreds of what you actually run on the track, so we use it on the street to kind of help gauge how we do, because a lot of times when you're racing other guys, neither of you could have a good pass. You don't really yeah. know. So we got this draggy thing and it's, it's pretty it's pretty bad. So that way it gives us a better than seat of the pants feel. We actually get a number and know what we're doing. So it's just a little module that calculates G-forces and gives you 60 foots in ETs. And yeah, it goes off a GPS and it has a okay. G-meter in it. So awesome. it's, it's pretty accurate. Sweet. Very. So, so we'll have yeah. quantifiable results when we make changes. It, mine, it was within a tenth and one mile per hour on my car every pass I made. And I made like seven minutes. Had to try. I'm not going to be that accurate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not going to be that consistent. But it'll, but it'll tell us what actually <laughs> happened. Yeah. Yeah. It'll yeah. let us know if it's as really getting, we, getting, getting down or not. As long as we're making improvements, it'll be good. Okay, cool. Let's make a t test pass. Let's awesome. do it. Come in on the boost a lot it very soon at all, but uh, no, like half and, track, and it raised the ass in way before you even took off. So you lost all of your extension okay. before you took off, so it can't plant the tires as you're going down yep. because they were already extended up. So I have too much anti squat, but yes, saying. I don't have yes. enough weight transfer for how much anti squat I have, so yes. I'm gonna drop the ladder bars down. Uh, as, as it's setting up, yeah, probably can't because yeah. it's, it's doing all the work here and by the time you get out there and make a power, yeah. they're already extended up so you're just okay. pissing so, away power. So I can either drop the the, the ladder bars down to get a lower anti-squat or put more weight in the back? 
we're tightening shocks so make the shocks make it where it can't extend fast. Okay. If you tighten the shocks up, they can't separate as fast. Right. Well, would you agree that we should just put weight in the back? Oh, right, yeah, weight's it? definitely going to help. Then we should probably drop the tire yeah. down. Yes. Go fill the tank up. Okay. So we put weight in the back. So I basically shocks. have an empty fuel tank right now. It's a 22 gallon tank. So what's six six pounds from this? Eight point one. Well, seven point eight for gas, and like eight point one for uh, water for gas. So I'll run to the gas station. I'll fill this thing up. And yeah, and uh, we'll get ready for the next one. And the next one, we'll lower the tire pressure. And what, what do you we'll think for a burnout? What do you think for uh, tire pressure? About 12. What you think? Oh. Yeah, that's what I'm like. What's in it now? 20. Yeah. 20. Yeah. It, it was 12. all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> what you start making power? Was it yeah, everywhere? You can see it. It started hazing the tires right there and then down there. Pretty much every time it came in the boost. <laughs> yeah, it was the weight's going to really help out a ton, though. It's going to, okay. because this thing's light now. Trans brakes going to be your best friend. Yeah. yeah. Because then it won't lift. It won't. So you already taken well, all your okay, suspension. Yeah, so you're not preloading the axle. Exactly. exactly. You so when you get a trans brake, you let go of it, it's going to plant the yeah. tires down. And that's going to make this truck all right. Actually, the truck is working. Yeah. If you had a brake, it would work like it is. Yeah, it's, that's, it's doing what it's supposed to. It's just when you're mashing the gas, it's picking it up. Yeah. Uh, now, if you were on a trans brake, you let go, it's going to extend the tires right. down. It would shock the tire. It would plant the tire to the ground. Okay. All right, so I just added about 120 pounds worth of fuel. The guys are dropping the tire temps, or the, the tire pressure. We're gonna run about 12 pounds on this pass. And it looks like he's setting up some track prep. So I, on that first pass, the truck was all over the road. We ran at 8.0 at 92 miles an hour, but I was it was pedal fast. Every time I got in the boost, it blew the tires off. It's all over the road. All right, I'm ready. Suspension's Wait. already did its work yeah. when the power comes in, so it can't extend anymore. Right. It's already extended. Okay. So, I mean, without moving the ladder bars down for a low ampere squat ratio, we could try to turn the shocks up, the dampening up a little? We could definitely do that. That'll help a lot. You think? Yeah, tightening them up, will, yeah, it'll slow the extension down, and that'll help. That, that really will help. But if I'm preloading this thing off the brake, and it's extended before I even leave, uh, but I don't think you're not planting the power as much as you would out there. Okay. You know, you're putting here, if you're on the brake, you're 250 horsepower probably, 300 horsepower. Down there, you're 700. Yep. And I think that would push the tires down more. But the only way to try, the only way to know is to try. Okay, well, let's tighten it up. Let's do it. I'm gonna go 10. 10? 10. That's, gonna, that's gonna be like mm. fully locked. Four, five, It'll like it. six. You're going to the right, right? Yep. It's too tight, but still like it. Look at the blue. It's gonna be tight, but I don't like it. Mine, I I'm gonna mine. make an uneducated guess and say it's too tight. It's gonna blow the tires off the whole track. Oh, we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> if it does, we'll try again. <laughs> hey, guess what just showed up? <laughs> He's all-wheel drive, yeah. and that's a finely tuned piece of machinery. I don't think I've got them, but we might have to run them.
this truck is awesome now. Like this truck is way awesome. So, all right, tell me, tell me what we just did. I just ran mystery man over here who doesn't have a face in his 17 GTR, and we were pretty close out of the hole. Stock, stock, stock. Nah, I got it. Upgrade. <laughs> now, look. Yeah, we were pretty close out of the hole. Yeah, that was pretty good. Um, I figured you were going to annihilate me on the bottom end and then I was going to have to come around you at the back end, but I think I left a little bit a little bit sooner than you did. Probably got a bit of and, and I just sort of held that off until half track when boost came on. That's right. Awesome. So what was what was the last what was the numbers on that? That last pass you did a 741 at 103. So we picked up another 10. Wait, all. the one that I let out on? The one you let out on, you actually did a 740 flat, but a 99 because you let off. You huh. actually went faster that time, but you let off, so you probably would have went into the 730s. Dang. So it was pretty sweet. The, the, so to run against him, you did a 740, 741. Hell. So yeah. You, so you picked up six tenths. Now you put getting? you put that in uh, his car for one pass? Yeah, and his car did a 749 and 96. Cool. So y'all were pretty dang close. Yeah, that's a close race. Yeah, he was just 60 foot in one eights and you were 60 foot in high one nines, you know, two O's. Yeah. On the street, you know, all the drive, you don't have that advantage. Well, I'm really excited because this thing's like, you can crush it now and it doesn't just point you the other direction. Because <laughs> like, it was scary to drive before. So we made a lot of really big improvements. It made a lot. Yeah, six tenths and 12 mile an hour. Yeah. Thank you for bringing your 2017 factory GTR out and uh, made my day. Oh, yeah. Like, you made my day for sure. It's pretty fun just to try it out. Thank you, man. You're going for a boat only here to buy for a long Oh, yeah? yeah definitely, <laughs> you got to make some mods now. You got to beat by a Toyota pickup. Oh, not just a Toyota pickup. Hey, that's a monster. <laughs> hey, name's only Frankenstein. Yeah, well, you know it's named Death Wish, right? Death Wish. Yeah, for good reason. That's right. What you say? What you say you make it? What you pay? For, for time or for power? Power wise. Pa right there, I think I'm like nine crank ish. Yeah, it's a lot. Hey, for being about 500 or uh, 500 wheel. Yeah. It's pretty close though, but. Yeah, yeah. We will be back. Hey, that's insane. <laughs> that's insane. Yeah. Good. Inspire you to do something dumb. Yeah, yeah exactly. Couple months, old GTR is gonna have the metal fenders like that. A couple GT45s hanging out in the hood. <laughs> Guaranteed, he's coming back. He is pissed. He ain't done yet. He got beat by everything here today. <laughs> he's not happy. It's... He didn't even want to try the faster ones. <laughs> stock Toyota pickup yeah. and a stock Corvette. Oh, Waxed okay. his ass. Yeah. <laughs> he needs a tetanus shot after racing that thing, getting beat like that. <laughs>